the point of a villain or an antagonist in a story, before anything else, is to contrast the protagonist in a meaningful way. The antagonist and his actions should push the protagonist, they should challenge his beliefs and his ideologies. The conflict, the dynamic is what makes for entertaining compelling content that can drive the story forward. I'm not really a fan of villains that just want to take over the world, they're just evil for the sake of being evil. And unfortunately, these days even really famous video games or TV shows seem to trail into that territory. On the other hand, there is also an oversaturation of the sympathetic backstory trope. Which is great when done right, but not only has it become quite overdone in recent memory, it also completely falls flat when the character is out here burning hospitals and causing mass casualties. I don't mind if the villain is straight up evil or if he's sympathetic, but it has to make sense, and it has to be in service of the story. So when I read Kagurabachi, the first manga ever to blow up as a meme and a joke, I did not expect anything. So imagine my surprise when I not only unironically enjoyed the manga, but in it, I also found the first antagonist in a while that I genuinely find to be a very intriguing and nuanced character with the potential to be the next big thing. The character is Kenichi Sojo. For those who are unfamiliar with Kagurabachi, the story is centered around these magical katanas that are called the Enchanted Blades. They were made by a man named Kunishige Rokuhira. Roughly 15 years before the story begins, there was an event called the Seite War, and Rokuhira's blades played a major role in ending that war, this achievement elevating him to the status of a legend. And among Rokuhira's many admirers was Sojo himself, this being a very important aspect of his character. After the war, the swords were kept in the Kunishige household, with Rokuhira constantly teaching the son Chihiro and warn him about the potential danger of these swords if they were to fall into the wrong hands. These weapons are capable of both good and evil, this being a theme that resonates throughout the entirety of Kagurapachi that we've seen so far, as well as the basis of Sojo and Chihiro's conflict. In the second chapter of the manga, we saw the Kunishige household get raided by a group of sorcerers called Hishaku. The group would also steal all the enchanted blades, with two of them falling into the hands of Genesis Sojo. Sojo is affiliated with Hishaku, but not strictly one of them. At least that's what we know so far. And that's all the context you need to know about Sojo to understand the rest of the video. Sojo is an influencer weapons dealer in the underworld. He has brazenly submitted one of the Enchanted Blades Shinuchi for sale, while using another one of the Enchanted Blades Cloud Gauger as his weapon of choice in combat. Besides the blades, he is also in possession of the Datenseki, the material, the ore the swords are made from. There is a really complicated explanation for how this material works, but Basically, most humans trying to work with them would just explode, whereas Chihiro's father Rokuhira was somehow able to maintain it, and this is what Sojo is trying to figure out himself. And in the relatively short 15 chapters out so far, Sojo has been an absolute show stealer. To elaborate more on what I mentioned briefly in the intro of this video, to me, a good antagonist must do these things. Have a compelling dynamic with their protagonist, have a goal that he is working towards, be a nuanced dimensional character, be charismatic, which is somewhat optional, and lastly, have an interesting backstory. And so far, Sojo got everything. As mentioned earlier, Chihiro's father Rokuhira is Sojo's idol. Just one thing, Sojo misunderstands pretty much everything that Rokuhira believes in. According to him, it's apparently blasphemy that Rokuhira would view katanas as anything but weapons of destruction. He is dead serious about this and he genuinely believes that he's honoring Rokuhita's legacy as he would have intended. This instantly creates a good dynamic with Chihiro because 1. They're essentially two sides of the same coin, destruction and protection, just like Chihiro's father warned him. And 2. Chihiro actually has a reason to hate Sojo. Chihiro's father was murdered by the same people that took the katana so he hasn't even finished grieving yet and he's out here having to deal with a sicko who is obsessed with his father and fully intends to ruin his reputation. I love this because we get the best content when the protagonist really hates the villain instead of trying to rehab him like a poor misunderstood outcast. As mentioned above, another reason I really like Sojo is because he has a goal he's working towards. He wants to surpass his idol and control the Datenseki. And what does he do to further his research? Really f***ed up shit. He captured this adorable innocent girl Shar Kiyonagi who is a direct descendant of this Kiyonagi clan. People that belong to this bloodline including Shar herself, possess an ability to regenerate their limbs. And sometime after the Seite War, there was a rumor that upon eating the flesh of a Kiyonagi clan member, one can become immortal. Thanks to these rumors, the Kiyonagi clan was nearly wiped out, with only a single documented survivor left who would turn out to be Shar's mother. The mother and the daughter both ended up in Sojo's custody at some point in the story. 
Why? Because the father, the husband himself, stole them out after finding out about their blood. This trope of an innocent kid getting caught up in the crossfires isn't new or anything, but Sha is just such a likable innocent kid that it works. Her facial expressions, her exhausted, just tired of life kind of look, the genuine joy on her face when she had companions for the first time is effective. And when she got captured again by Sojo, and he once again ran his despicable experiments on her, you really feel repulsive, and it adds even more fire to Chihiro and Sojo's rivalry. And after his first encounter with Chihiro, he was modest enough to admit that he needs to do more research on the katanas. It's refreshing to see a shonen villain taking a step back when needed, and not being stupid and stubborn just for the sake of the plot. In chapter 13, it was revealed that the Enchanted Blaze can have the sort of power-ups that defies logic. It's this intimate thing between the user and the weapon, like Bankai from Bleach. And Sojo and Chihiro have both unlocked it in the last two chapters. This heavily hints that their rivalry will be this long-term thing, with parallels in their journey. And this panel further drives home the theme about Sojo and Chihiro being the yin and yang of the Kagurabashi world. I hope I'm correct on this because Sojo is far too good to be only a volume 1 kind of villain. I genuinely feel like there is potential for Chihiro and Sojo to join those league of characters that become iconic rivals, and you can't think of one without the other. It might be quite high of an expectation, but we'll see. Sojo is currently set to battle Chihiro seriously in chapter 17, and I think this fight will be a real turning point for the manga. He defeated the Kamunabi elite squad in a really good fight after unlocking his special abilities. I really like that Takedo gave both Sojo and Chihiro these little jobber showcase fights before they face each other. It's just a classic way to set up a fight. And I hope he sticks around after the fight with Chihiro because I think there is more to explore with him still. Because we got to see a tiny snippet of his backstory when the sorcerer made Sojo see a flash of his own past. And in the flashback, we can see young Sojo standing in a field of flowers as many adult men in suits were suspended upside down, with visible drops of blood dripping from their body. So his backstory seemed to be something really serious, and I hope there is more to come out of this. To summarize, Sojo is just a character that everything clicks with him right now. He's not corny, and he's not this fake deep philosophical kind of character. He's not trying to be the most profound thing ever either. He's just this crazy menace that is genuinely a good foil to the protagonist and he's captivating every time he's on screen and every time he fights. It's a feeling you can't really fake or put into words and that feeling in your stomach when you can tell you're seeing something that's gonna become huge. I've been genuinely enjoying Kagurabachi as of late and I think I'll continue to make videos on it for the foreseeable future alongside my documentaries and regular uploads. So hope you guys enjoyed. So far it's been Edward Takeshi, thanks for watching as always. And peace.